everybody, my name is John. Today I'm going to be talking about The Stranger in the Woods, the extraordinary story of The Last True Hermit, written by Michael Finkel. I absolutely love this book. I gave it five out of five stars, and I'm really excited to be talking about it. The story centers around a guy named Christopher Knight. This guy decided basically when he was 20 something, like 20, 22 years old, I can't recall his exact age, but he decided to basically abandon all people. Um, he, he hopped in his car and he parked on the side of the main woods and he walked in and for 30 something odd years, he never came out. He managed to find a way to survive throughout uh, these 30 something years without talking to or really making human contact with a single human being the entire time. He was literally alone by himself, um, by his own design and desire for these 30 something years. Now one of the ways that he survived, and it's debatable whether he was really a true hermit because of this reason, is he would steal from people who had these summer and winter vacation homes um, located nearby his campsite. And he would find these crazy ways to break into people's houses. He could pick locks, he could walk through windows and come through undetected in a bunch of different ways and he would steal from people. He would steal food, magazines, books. He was a huge reader, um, like video games, but he had some sort of moral code or a compass to it almost. Um, he would only really take the food that he needed. He would take books and magazines, um, you know, usually past their, past their release date. Um, he would take kids' video games, but he made sure that they were not necessarily like brand new and new releases because he felt bad that he was doing this. And he would bring all these things back to his campsite basically to make uh, this little humble abode for him and survive. Because of the stealing and because of him breaking into people's homes, uh, this was a much discussed topic in this little area of Maine and it, it even made some national headlines. Um, this guy was almost like a Bigfoot or an urban legend because a lot of people didn't believe that he could be surviving in the Maine woods during this ridiculously cold and brutal winter climate that they're in. The author talked to a lot of these locals who felt violated and felt like uh, he was very polarizing. So some of them felt violated, some of them felt like he was, um, you know, just kept to himself and they were happy to help him out with food or whatever it might be. But uh, he, he was very polarizing and these people didn't believe that he was real. They thought it was maybe a gang of kids, play, pranks or whatever it might be. Uh, they were like, there's no way that this one dude is surviving for 30 something years out in these winters. Like nobody can handle it. There's no way that this one person can all by himself. Uh, and it ended up being true that this actually was a person and he was doing it all by himself without any help. And it really is remarkable that he was even able to survive. Now this guy, he had almost a like methodical precision way that he went about walking. He only went out at night. He retraced his steps so he wouldn't make footprints. He, uh, to a T, had everything down so he would not get caught. He tried everything in his power to make sure that nobody ever saw him again. And that's the way that he liked it. It was pretty cool to just read this story and read a, a straightforward story about a guy who is living his life on his own terms and he did something and he stuck to it with dedication and uh, just desire to do something that he wanted to do and to live his life the way that he wanted to live it. So I'm taking that away as the central thesis or idea of this book and uh, it, it's pretty cool to have this really tangible example of this guy who just uh, killed it and lived his life the way he wanted to. And just one note on the book itself, I thought the author did a really good job of keeping it concise and to the point while still making you invested in this character. No matter what side you're on, you like him, you didn't like him, you thought he was a weirdo or you thought he was you know, a genius for living the life that he wanted to live, um, I, I think no matter what, you do get invested in this main character and you you almost root for him in a sense. So that pretty much wraps it up. I think it's pretty clear that I really love this book. I, I really enjoyed The Stranger in the Woods. I would recommend it. Um, it'll make you want to go on an adventure, go camping, or just get away from people for a day and think and be by yourself and realize that that's okay. Um, so I really loved it and I can't recommend it enough. So um, if you've read it already, let me know your thoughts if I'm way off or um, if you want to talk about it a little bit more, definitely let me know. But um, yeah, go check it out. Read it. The Stranger in the Woods.